Alrighty, folks, we are diving into a new clinical trial that looked at the effects of fasting on both human growth hormone as well as insulin. Let's dive into the de- <laughs> let's dive into the details. The title of the study is "Insulin Resistant Reduction: Intermittent Fasting and Human Growth Hormone: A Secondary Analysis of a Randomized Controlled Trial." Uh, what I think is really interesting about this study is they looked at how fasting uh, can impact human growth hormone. Now, I know a lot of people talk about, well, the reason why I fast is to increase growth hormone and so forth. And it turns out that fasting increases temporary pulsatile release of human growth hormone. And so we're going to talk about uh, that. I think it's quite interesting. Now, there are other ways to increase growth hormone uh, with exercise and and things like that. But uh, this study did find that fasting uh, increases growth hormone. So I realize um, my camera here is focusing on something else. Hopefully it's not uh, too bad there. Uh, Let me know what you think of this content as we go through, friends. Grateful that you are here. And let's dive into this analysis right now. Okay. So I'm going to clear these layers so that you can see this, and we're going to dive into the study. Uh, Again, I think this is a really, really fascinating uh, study. And what I want to do, and this was published in Nature Journal's uh, uh, Metabolic Health and Diseases. So in essence, this was a 20-week intermittent fasting study where individual uh, investigators looked at HOMA IR score, looked at human growth hormone, and they randomized people uh, to do 24-hour water-only fasts twice per week for four weeks. And they wanted to see what effect that had on metabolic health and what effect run-in growth hormone and run-in insulin levels had on a growth hormone as well as body composition, which I think is quite interesting. So, They stratified people based upon their fasting human growth hormone, and it turns out that lower baseline growth hormone was actually linked with better health improvements associated with fasting, which is quite interesting. Um, But here's what I want to focus on here, and this is figure two. Um, So you can see here the changes... uh, uh, here in growth hormone are, are on my on the screen center there. And again, if you're liking the content, hit that like button. Let me know where you're watching this from in the comment section. It's a little quiet on the old comments. Uh, again, grateful that you all are here live. The figure here, the caption is changes in human growth hormone for intermittent fasting and control arms. And essentially what we see in figure A here is there was more increases. Hey guys, appreciate you being here. There were significant increases in human growth hormone um, in the intermittent fasting group versus uh, the control group. And I think that's quite interesting. Now, what does that really mean? Um, well, I think that as a mechanism, uh, hold on, I'm gonna clear this layer so you can see me. As a mechanism, it turns out that growth hormone in a low energy state such as fasting helps to liberate stored fatty acids from the fat tissue. So it makes sense then that you would see an increase in the uh, release of pulsatile growth hormone. And so that's exactly uh, what you're seeing here. So I don't know. I think it's just quite interesting to know that there are many benefits linked with fasting. We get a reduction in blood glucose, a reduction in blood insulin, and then you get increased pulsatile releases of human growth hormone, as you can see here associated with intermittent fasting. And so... um, the changes over the course uh, were actually that there was a, a lot of outliers here. Some individuals tend to release a lot more human growth hormone during fasting compared to other individuals. So there's some inter-individual variability. Uh, it also turns out that when individuals have lower baseline growth hormone going into the fasting study, they release more growth hormone during fasting. And that's what you can see here, again, depicted in figure 4B. There is a pretty significant increase in human growth hormone um, in individuals who have low growth hormone. So that's kind of the take-home number two here is if you want to optimize your growth hormone levels, you know by running your uh, IGF-1 levels, for example, when you uh, do your labs and you want to optimize that, well, it turns out that if your levels are already low to begin with, fasting tends to increase it. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, and that might be some of the, some of the 
uh, magic here that when people talk about fasting, well, my skin looks more clear. My brain feels uh, more focused and the cobwebs have been sort of removed and, and things like that. So anyway, I think it's quite interesting and I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. Any question is fair game on these live uh, shows. Um, you know, grateful that you all are here and let's, uh, I'm just going to leave the, uh, the study, study, um, reference so that you can see this. Okay. We have folks here from Oklahoma, New York city, Louisiana, Texas, California, Utah, New York state, Flagstaff, Arizona. Fun fact. I went to college for several years at NAU, Northern Arizona university in Flagstaff. I like Flagstaff. Um, Okay, we have one commenter here saying, I'm already fasted for 120 hours, which is, wow, that's awesome. That's uh, more than I've ever done. I've made it to about 72 hours, but 120 is, is pretty amazing. Nice work there. Um, so again, we're talking about this study published. Uh, this was a 26-week randomized controlled trial where investigators looked at human growth hormone they stratified individuals based upon their baseline growth hormone levels. And as we just reviewed, but there's a lot more folks uh, coming on here, as we just reviewed, uh, individuals who had lower baseline levels of growth hormone tended to have significant increases. Uh, this was a 2,000% increase, well, actually 1,500% increase in human growth hormone. So if your growth hormone is low, it, doing a 24-hour fast might increase it. And the physiologic rationale for that makes a lot of sense, right? When you're in a low energy state, growth hormone is being released to help to liberate fat tissue, liberate stored energy from fat cells to increase glycerol as well as free fatty acids that make ketones. And growth hormone also has anti-catabolic effects to help prevent the breakdown and catabolism of muscle tissue. And so what we see here are pretty significant increases over the course of 26 weeks of fasting versus the control group, uh, looking at growth hormone changes. So um, I don't know. I, I, to me, I think this is just incredibly fascinating. Uh, I would love to know what you think in the comment section below, my friends. Uh, as always, grateful that you're all here live. We have 41 comments. Appreciate you, or 41 likes. Appreciate you hitting the, that like button. Uh, any metabolic questions are fair game. I'm going to pop out the chat here. Uh, okay, so we're going to pop this out. Let's see what questions we have. All right. It's complex, but not impossible. We have folks from Connecticut in the house. My food addiction says, will I get any benefits from a 45 hour fast to burn belly fat? You know, I th it really depends on how much belly fat or you know visceral abdominal fat you have. Um, I think fasting is a good tool for that, but I'm a bigger fan of resistance training um, for recompositioning your body to help to increase uh, lean muscle tissue and help to also uh, support your resting metabolic rate and burn fat tissue. So um, that's interesting. Uh, Lucinda says, why do some say fasting is bad for female hormones? Yeah, so excessive fasting, excessive being in an energy deficit for an extended period of time can be problematic for both men and women, but women for sure, because it can increase cortisol, adrenaline, and affect uh, you know female hormones. So uh, good point there. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, JM says, I'm healthy metabolically in my late 60s. Is 168 just enough to avoid protein loss? JM, this is a good question. So is having an eight-hour feeding window and a 16-hour fasting window good for supporting metabolic health? Um, I think overall, yeah. And then prioritize your protein to have around one gram of protein, 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass. I think that's a good idea. KIA says, I've never fasted. How do I start? This is a great question. Well, I would suggest just skipping dinner and that can get you into an 18 hour fast pretty easily. So if you just have a late lunch, you know, you skip dinner, you don't have breakfast till 10 or 11 in the morning, you're getting yourself into an 18 hour fast quite easily, which I think is really good. Um, so that's a, that's a good point. But, you know, in regards to losing muscle tissue, as you get older, as many of you know, by now, you tend to become a little bit more catabolic and lose uh, muscle tissue. And so we want to prioritize protein and not excessively fast as we get older. 
Um, but I want to get back to my food addiction says, will I get any benefits from my 45 hour fast to burn belly fat? You know, diving right into a 45 hour fast, if you've never done it, I'm a little bit more of a fan of being consistent with fasting and not being over the top right out of the gate. So starting out with 18.6 or a one meal a day sort of protocol, I think is a really good idea and not just diving right into a 45 hour fast. Now that can, can help kickstart and really help you feel and recognize what true satiety is. But I, I think it would be uh, beneficial to ease into it a little, a little bit with more consistent fasting. Uh, the way that I look at fasting is, is the way that I look at exercise. Running a marathon is great, but if you're so tired from that marathon, you can't exercise after the fact for weeks or uh, whatever, it probably problematic. It might be better to run three miles a day every day, right? And so that's why I think it's better to just maybe skip dinner or have an earlier dinner so that you elongate that evening fast. And I do want to remind you, I mentioned elongate your fast. A tool that can help you is the Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. What makes this formula unique is it not only helps curb your evening food cravings, but it also helps support metabolic health. Berberine has been used for 3,000 years. There's a lot of great reviews over at myoscience.com. Check that out in the link in the description below. A lot of great feedback from that. Okay, uh, what other questions do we have, my friends? Thank you again for being here. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Again, the study that we're talking about here uh, is titled Intermittent, uh, sorry, Insulin Resistance Reduction, Intermittent Fasting and Human Growth Hormone, Secondary Analysis of a Randomized Controlled Trial. So if there's not any questions, we can part ways. Mike has a question for me. Mike says, can you comment on the recent comments by Rhonda Patrick and others who said that they've changed their views on stopping intermittent fasting? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people have gone away from, and a lot of people, myself included, um, excessive prolonged fasting because it can be problematic uh, for, you know, it can accelerate loss of lean muscle tissue. So I think that's uh, one of the things that we want to be mindful of is losing lean muscle tissue, uh, especially as we get older. We need muscle mass, right? We need muscle mass for a lot of different reasons for metabolic health, to prevent trips and falls. Uh, muscle is where most of our post-meal glucose gets deposited into. It's a glucose and insulin sponge. Muscle is really important. So uh, excessive prolonged fasting can be problematic for lean muscle tissue. All right. Can fasting insulin be too low? You know, most people's fasting insulin is between three and five, you know, if, if they're metabolically healthy. I recently ran my labs and that's where they were at. Uh, they consistently run into that, uh, in that range. So can consider that. Um, too low. Now, you don't want a high fasting insulin. Remember, insulin is a post-meal hormone. It increases after a meal. There's no physiologic need to have a high fasting insulin. Um, so... Anyway, um, KIA says, I've never fasted. Where do I start? As I mentioned, you know, cutting out, uh, have a later lunch, an earlier dinner. Uh, skipping dinner even is a great place to start when it comes to fasting. So uh, hopefully you guys found this study helpful. As I alluded to, the uh, study that we're talking about here is the uh, insulin resistance changes with uh, and the associations with human growth hormone. Uh, essentially, what this study found, I'll make this a little bit bigger before we part ways, uh, is people who have low baseline human growth hormone have a pretty significant increase in growth hormone when they start fasting. This is a 1,500% increase in human growth hormone um, when they start fasting. Uh, and this was two 24-hour 20, fasts per week. So, that's what we have here, my friends. If you enjoyed this content, hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend. I'm grateful that you tuned in and we'll catch you on a future live show next Tuesday. Have an awesome day, all. Bye.